welcome to The Shack. My name is Barbara Gray from Clarity here in the UK and uh, we're all set to have some F for fun this morning. It'd be nice to have your company. I know that Paul is in the building with you. So if you have any questions, then he'll be able to answer them. And other than that, we're just going to crack on where we left off last Thursday. How is everybody? Let me just check that I've got the right... Uh, where are you? Yeah, there we go. Good morning, Linda. Always lovely to see you. And, um, and now I know that everything is working. I'm just waiting for Paul to let me know that the sound is okay and then we can crack on. Good morning. Good morning, Anya. So we've got friends all over the world coming to see us. Thank you, Paul. The sound is nice and clear. So come on then, let's have a shout out from around the world. Who have we got with us today? And whereabouts in England are you? And is the sun shining? And is the cherry blossom out? We've got fantastic cherry blossoms and magnolias in our garden. Really, really beautiful. Um, what have we got here? Okay. Strange. Anyway, as you can see, I'm at Clarity Towers this morning um, because the builders at home are making way too much noise um, for us to, to get together there. So I thought we'll move the party to Edenbridge. Good morning, Nahid. Good morning. Marion, grüß dich. I hope that Irene is doing well. So we've got Marion in Deutschland. Yeah, cherry blossom from the Isle of Thanet. Nice. And is the sun shining where you are? So let's have a little catch up. Do you remember back in the day when we were in lockdown, we always used to ask, where are you? Where are you tuning in from? I think it's important. Wisbech. Oh, Cambridgeshire. Very nice. Nice part of the world. Berkshire. It's looking good. It's looking promising. Solihull. Good morning, Sue. Birmingham. Isn't it? Solihull. Northern Ireland. Beth. Lovely to have your company. Yeah, if I miss, it's because it's going too fast for me. Wet, wet West Wales. Well, there's a surprise. <laughs> Bexhill on Sea. Absolutely marvellous. Surrey, Northamptonshire. You know, that is the thing about the internet. I know we, there's Paul Church, Edenbridge. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Yeah, you know, that's the thing about the, the internet. Cornwall. Wet and miserable. Is it, Tina? Plumpstead. Um, you know, when could we ever get together like this in the past remotely? It's quite something. Gateshead. Gateshead. Uh, ah, Newcastle. Yeah, my geography is rubbish. Plumpstead. Yeah, my geography is absolute rubbish. Where's Plumpstead? Sounds like it should be in London, but I don't know if it is. Uh, Basingstoke. Yeah. You know, we were talking about it again at the weekend, how with the news, um, it's so instant now. You know, there was a time, it would take months if we ever found out that something, that there was a New York earthquake, for example, right? So there we had, uh, on Saturday, I think, there was an earthquake in New York City, in the Big Apple. Within a minute, we all knew about it, you know? And that can be a good thing, but it can also be a really bad thing because we're so powerless over these things, you know, and then suddenly it's like, oh, no, where's Grace? Is she okay? Blah, blah, blah. Of course she was fine. Um, London. Yeah, good. I'm, I haven't completely lost the plot, Angela. <laughs> you know, and but the thing is, I think, that we humans, while we're waiting for everybody to come in, I actually don't think that we're wired to take in all this information. It's constant, isn't it? It's like a bombardment, you know. This is happening in Ukraine. This is happening in Gaza. This has happened in New York. There's another one in Taiwan, another terrible earthquake. Boom, boom, boom. Africa, atrocities. Bing, boom, bing, boom, boom. And suddenly we're like, whoa, I was only just looking at the cherry blossoms in the garden and making a cup of tea. And now suddenly I have a global awareness of chaos, you know. And, and then we wonder why we get anxious, you know? There's enough little things. There are so many little things in our own, I wouldn't say insignificant lives, 
but you understand. You know, there are so many things in our lives, just in my life, in your life, in the company life, you know, there's so many things to consider and I'm not say worry about, but think about and and work out, you know, and work on and work with. And then we get this avalanche of news. Let's just call it news from all over the world. And there's not much we can do about any of it, really. Every now and again, you get, you know, you get some some really like uplifting and 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 positive news, but it's rare, isn't it? It's rare, you know. So here we are from all over England, Chester, the UK. Um, yep, nice town. Um, then Wales, Scotland. Isle of Man, Isle of Wight, and then it goes on, then Ireland and Europe and Germany. And I bet we've got some friends from Canada and North America, and sometimes even the Australians and the Kiwis come to play, you know. So the thing about this little hour is that we can have a lovely international gathering. And whether there are 50 people or 500 people, it makes no odds. The main thing is that we're here, you know, and we're going to do a little bit of doodling, we're going to park all that stuff just for an hour. Do me a favor, just for an hour. And we're going to doodle and we're going to redirect our thinking a little bit, you know, do something fun. Do you remember on Thursday, cool, we did have a laugh, from a very wet Manchester. Is it raining in Manchester? Never had so much rain. Norway, Ellen, isn't it lovely? You know, I love that. I love that we can get together. So the internet has its positives. You know, it has its positives. But we have to know that, that you've got to protect yourself a little bit from that bombardment of daily, daily chaos. Yes, we want to be informed. Yes, we want to know. But what can we really do about it? You know, apart from worry and feel sad for the poor victims in these disasters all over the world. You know, so are we selfish? Just for an hour, can we be selfish? Just for an hour, can we say, let's park it all. Give your brain a break. Give your brain a break. I should go on, on main, la la you know what? I sometimes say, I should, if they give me five minutes on the TV, on mainstream TV, like, give me, give me five minutes on ITV. Give your brain a break. That's what I think. Give your brain a break. Doodle along with Barbie. <laughs> Don't you reckon? But I've got enough on my plate without doing mainstream <laughs> TV. Right, come on, friends. So on Thursday, do you remember we're doing uh, F? F for fashion. Now, now, it's 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning. Crafting's much better. Yeah. So on, we started with F for fashion. F for friends, F for family, F for flowers, F for loads of things, right? And so on, let's just put this here, F for felt. Yeah, date for the diary. Paul is, have you been felt by clarity? Have you been felt by clarity? Well, Paul's going to be on telly on Sunday and he's going to be heading up a felt by clarity show. More will be revealed later, F for felt. So what we were doing on um, on Thursday, which was so fun, we were daubing. Do you remember? Let me just see. So we daubed with um, our acrylic paint. I brought all this in just to show you, but we're not going to do this. I've got another idea today. All right, so we were just, we diluted these, didn't we, these acrylic paints with water, and then we got our paint brushes just to rivet. it. So if you didn't, if you missed this and you want to have a play, this was so fun, F for fun. F for freedom of the mind, just for an hour, you know, because while you're daubing these F for funny people, you're not thinking about all the other things that are going on, okay, in your life or in the world. Yeah, so we did these, we did, the, we did paintbrush daubs, didn't we? 
And then we had like little F for family. We added, we just used a pencil then to add the heads and the legs. It was so fun. Look, this was so funny. The family photo. <laughs> and then and then you just add legs and you get these really fabulous, F of fabulous little characters going on. It's so fun. There you go, form a queue. They all look like they're hoisting up their skirts. <laughs> F for fashion. Really fun. Just let it go, girls. Hey. And this is what it started out like. So if you you look at that, you can't imagine that you're going to get that out of that, but you do. You know, look, F for fridge. She knows where the fridge is. <laughs> She's got a nice little eyeglass waist. But out of these little blobs, we made these fabulous girls. Yeah. So so that's what we did on Thursday evening at seven o'clock. You can watch that back. OK. So I was thinking about it because obviously I was on the telly yesterday. So I kind of was running out of time a little bit. And then I thought, oh, I know. I know. When I was a kid, when I was a teenager and I was at school, I was I was the one that always got into trouble for doodling. I was always doodling. So my and even in, in junior school, in primary school, I would write a poet, a poem, but I couldn't just leave the poem on its own. I had to decorate the margins. I had to doodle around the margins. If I wrote a word, I had to put flowers around the word. Were well, you like that as well? You know, it was just in, it's in me. And I used to get into trouble for it as well, but I never stopped doing it, always. So I, and one of the things I used to do, right, it was in the history class. I used to wind, wind the teacher up endlessly. I'll just take this out of the way. And what I used to do, what have we got here? That'll do. That'll do. Thank you. I used to say, for example, I used to take, well, it started out with like Elizabeth I. Do you remember? And they they had that kind of writing. You see it on telly. Just write Elizabeth. And when you got to there, you used to go like that, didn't you? Or the, like that. And, and it's just this. It's that. Around you go. And then you can go in and you can go out and you can add it to a letter especially a letter that's coming down anyway, like that, right? So so this is really got a lot of potential, friends, All right? So, for example, let's go uh, fashion, F fashion. So we'll go like that, F, F, and then fashion, and then off we go. Boom. And then I reckon a little on the Z. Isn't that cool? And then, of course, once you've got your, the main word down, right, then you can start to – so now let's start looping. So it's a little bit – is it calligraphy? I don't know. I don't know. But I know that the Elizabethans used to do this a lot on their words, didn't they? See? And I quite like this. It's, it's, there's a lot of flow, F for flow, F for freedom, you know? So I started – so I had to think about this, okay, and then I got carried away. So, you're right, you ready? All right. I remember drawing a stamp like this ages ago, really ages ago, okay? Sonia Goodley must catch up with F for fashion. That looked like so much fun. It really was. Flourish, F for flourish, F for flow. F for flourish. So I thought we'd have a go at these little people. And you can see here, so I, I've got the, the shape there, and then I've filled it in. Actually, I'll be straight with you. I did the shape, and then I went in afterwards with the... I did this, I did the flourish first, and then I went in and drew the outline, right? So you could, it's six or one and a half, half a dozen of the other. We could try both, and then you could decide which you prefer. Do you find it easier to give yourself a basic a parameter, a wall to flourish to, right? So you go, oh, like that to the waist and then out to the, you know, you might want to put your outline in first or just go for it, you know? Try both. See which you prefer. And all we're going to use, and this is the point, isn't it? And that is really the magic of the shack. All you need is a piece of paper. And a pencil. That's it. Okay. P 
piece of paper and a pencil. And there's not one of you there that hasn't got a piece of paper. We'll get to P one day when we're doing the alphabet. A piece of paper and a pencil. You know, that's the key here. And yeah, of course, sometimes we we bring in other things. Like when we're doing the craft along, then I say, right, there's a set of stamps that you're going to need to do the craft along. Join in, you know, and you know that you're going to learn loads. And it really would be good if you get the right stamps so that you can properly craft along. If you can't, fine, F for fine, then just bring something to the party that's similar. But got, I'll show you the stamps, I'll show you the felt down the road. Let's get started though, okay? And all you need is a pencil and a piece of paper and a slug of decaf coffee. I'm really nervous today. I was nervous yesterday, nervous today. And so the last thing I need is caffeine. So I'm drinking decaf coffee a la Jim. I think it's a good idea, you know, chamomile peppermint, all those lovely herbal teas. But today I feel it's a psychological thing because I'm tired. So, well, if I have a coffee, then at least I'll think, I'll, I'll think it's working. <laughs> Good morning, Hazel. Nice to have your company. Always something crops up, which means I'm late. I know, Hazel. I have to be on time. Otherwise, I'd always be late too. Actually, no, that's not true. I, I I am one of those people, and so is Dave, who rocks up early. We're always early to the party. Yeah, I think so. I think well, I think it's I think it's because of the job that we do. You know, you can't be late for a TV show. You can't be late for this. You know, because of people waiting. So I guess, and I bet you what, Hazel, when you're doing your little workshops, your lovely workshops, I bet you're not late then, are you? No. It's when the, when you've got to perform, you usually get there on time. I know you do. Right, now, let's have a look. So we've got three girlies. These are lovely, right? And this, this isn't, she hasn't got, a, like, saggy boobs. Look, <laughs> I looked at this and I thought, no, it's supposed to be like a poncho. This is supposed to be like that. See? <laughs> it looks like she's got really huge boobs. But it's not that. I was trying to make the arms come out. You know, like in the 50s, they used to wear, it was like a really beautiful. And then they had a cape over the top. Yeah. But the way I've drawn it, it looks like she's got really hanging, hanging boobs. That's all right, though. Hanging boobs are good. Hey, you wear it, girl. You wear it well. So you see what we're doing here, though. Right. She said wriggling out of that tight spot. And then we've got these two. Oh, yeah. So I thought I'd show you how to do legs as well. I figured that one out. Same kind of style. And then the hats are a little bit different. They're not overlapped. So we'll do the hats as well. These ones, I'm telling you, these ones, I put the shape in and then I filled it. These ones, I went with it and then I put the shape in. But... We're not putting any colour in at all, like we did on Thursday, and then figuring out what we can see. You know, we'll put the colour in right at the end. Makes sense. OK. Right. Shall we get started? I reckon we've got plenty of friends in the building now. Let's get going. So I'm going to, I'll take this. Actually, what might be a good idea is... Which one should we go? Let's put the legs are advanced. We'll do them next. Let's do these ones first. So we'll have a look at this one, right? So I reckon, just take a piece of paper. Let's do it like this. This is only for doodling, all right? You could do it on tracing paper afterwards, but let's get your sketch down first. Let's get the shape down that you like, right? So first thing we want to do Let's do a girl. i tell you which is the easiest one, actually, is this one here. She's really easy, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to go, you've got to think, right? So what you're thinking is when you do this, right, you go down and you think boobs. Right, here we go. Boobs coming in, lovely little waist. Down we come. Okay, now we're coming out for the hips. We're coming out for the hips. What a figure this girl's got. 
This is a Naomi of our calligraphy world. And now we're coming down and she can't actually get in a car or sit down or walk. But my goodness, she's elegant. OK, and she's got little feet at the bottom, hands. She's got little, little three quarter length gloves just to, so she didn't have to do her nails. And then we've got a hat. We'll sort the hat out afterwards. Ken is on holiday near Stonegate and struggling with a signal in the country lane. Oh, Ken, are you? Where's Stonegate? Where is Stonegate, Ken? Sounds like the West Country. What does that say? Hey, uh, great holiday, Ken. Oh, <laughs> all right. Very funny, Lillian. <laughs> Each time car drives past, Good morning, Ken. Not far from you? Stonegate is not far from me? What are we talking about? Right, come on, let's concentrate. Okay. So what we're going to do now is uh, the one in the middle. Frant. Okay. Frant. Tunbridge Wells. Cool. There's a really big... Um, yeah, okay. So there's a, a great big music concert near France in the summer, in June, the week after the open days, in fact. That's why the open days are on the open days, because we go to the music festival. Black Deer, the Black Deer Music Festival near Tunbridge Wells is right by France. And, um, and the reason that we put, as if by our God Atelia, right, here we go, these tickets, right, we put our dates on Friday the 7th and Saturday the 8th of June because um, the Black Deer Festival is on and it's our local one. And we, we struggle to get tickets for Glastonbury. And to be honest, so many of the acts from Glastonbury come here first. And it's down the road. You can walk there, you know, and it's not expensive. So um, I'm talking about the Black Deer Festival. The Ditton, um, the Ditton tickets, they're on sale. They're selling well now. You know, I think this is the event of the year. And if you're going to get to a clarity gig, this is the one. Okay. Now, let's go back to our sexy girl. So I'm not going to, I'm going to put that to one side. I don't want to, I don't want to copy. Because what happens is if I'm copying, right, then I'm not, doesn't, she doesn't have to be like that one. But what she's going to be is in a tight dress with a little tiny waist, buttocks, yeah, and then right down to the legs. Okay, let's go for it. Right, so here we go. And leave enough room for the hat, right? So we'll start here, and we're going to go right neck. Then we're coming out for the boobs. Not too big. Right, she's not huge. Then we're coming in for the waist. Now, after the waist, you can always stop and have a think. You don't have to carry on. It's not like, it's not propelled. It's not got a motor in it. You can stop and have a think. Right, so how long do we go down to about here? Right, off we go again. We're going to go now to the hips. So slowly, she's got beautiful figure. Eyeglass, right? So hourglass, not eyeglass. Right, and then it comes in. Now we're coming in for the legs. Right, down we go. Should we give her a little kink? Like she's, yeah, come on then. So we're going to go like that. There's her knees. And down we go. Sorted. Oh, look, you can see what she's doing. Right, so we've got her there, we've got her neck. Let's get her arms in, shall we? Right, just lightly, almost like air drawing. So you want to make sure that you get your arm. Where do you want to put her arm? Do you want to have her putting her arm like on the on the hip? Like so she's coming down like that. Let's do it like like so. That's quite nice, isn't it? And then this one. I don't know. What do I want to do with that one? No, that looks weird. Oh, all hail to the eraser pencil. This is our one of our biggest selling. Groovy tabs. <laughs> this is comical. How we keep this business going is a riddle to me. Our biggest selling items, right, <laughs> is it says lots. Groovy tabs and eraser pencils. <laughs> a comical, isn't it? Actually, on the subject of our biggest selling items, We've got, ah, oh, okay, you might have got an email already. Today, we launched the Pergamano party. Hang on, I've got 
it's gone wrong here. The, the Pergamano party, okay? So it's a sale. It's up to about 75% sale. It's good. It's a really good sale. But it's on the Pergamano website. Let me put this down for a minute. It's on the Pergamano website, not the Clarity website, the Pergamano.com. Now, you'll be wondering, but everything in the Pergamano website is available on the Clarity website. It is true, but the discounted prices are on the Pergamano page. Or not on the page, website, Pergamano.com. And this is, here's the rub. Your club discount, because the vast majority of you good people are club members, which means you get 10 and 15% always on the Clarity website. However, the 60 and 50 and 70% sale is on the Pergamano website. Your club discount does not count. It still far outweighs, the sale far outweighs what you would pay on the Clarity website. But what we're doing is, you see, Pergamano has a whole other audience. You know, like today, Norway, Africa, Germany, Australia. It's the same thing with Pergamano. Pergamano is all over the world, right? It's been around for a long time. And as such, it has its own audience, its own tribe. And a lot of people only come to Pergamano. They don't come to Clarity. They don't want the stamps. They don't want the ink pads. They only want Pergamano things. Every now and again, they'll, might, they'll buy a groovy plate. Fine, right? So we've got the groovy plates over. All the groovy plates are over on the Pergamano website. I hope I'm right when I say that. I think I am, right? But so we're having a sale for those people. That is not to say that the Clarity Tribe, you good people, can't have a look at that website and see if there isn't something you want over there that you want to top up on. Anything to do with Pergamano is over there at a very, very good price. I think it's all week. Started this morning at nine o'clock. We had our meeting beforehand to make sure it was all set to go. But that is, as I say, that's for a, for a whole other world, right? There's a big overlap. Of course there is, okay? But the point I'm making is that your, your club discount is exclusive to the department store, if you like, Clarity. It's not exclusive to the Pergamano, the brand, right? It's like going to John Lewis and then trying to use your John Lewis card when you go, um, you go to uh, an Apple store. You, you see what I mean? Um, so, so heads up, there's a fantastic sale over on the Pergamano website. And uh, and Paul will give you, I think he might have posted the link already, uh, but it's well worth investigating if you want to top up on things or have a look or look at the tools. You So you've got all your Pergamano tools, your books, your plates, your grids. It's all over there. Uh, all your coloring implements. Anything you use, <laughs> including groovy tabs, <laughs> light waves, they're over there. Great price. See, so so that's worth mentioning. And Paul, if I've forgotten to say anything, I'm sure you'll tell me. Now, cracking on. Can you see our girl here? So I've got rid of that arm because that looks a bit dodgy. And now I'm going to pop this arm in here like so. There we go. And this arm. Let me have a look at this. So her legs, I think her legs are going to be like so. There you go. Because she really cannot, she's going to be like that, right? Little feet and little legs like that. There you go. That's lovely. Okay. She looks good. I'll lose that there. So, so she's got this really lovely, yeah, it's going to look good. Okay. And then this arm. Uh, what's she going to do with it? Let's have a think. When in doubt, hang about. I say, she, let's just pop it out like, let's just do that. There you go. So that arm's like that. There's her hand. And then this arm, I think I'm bending it the wrong way. That's why she looks like she's in pain. <laughs> there you go. And there's her hand like that. So that hand's like that, that hand's like that, that's it. She's got that kind of nonchalant, you know, that, oh, whatever, right? 
<laughs> She's lost it again. Okay. There we are. That looks lovely. And then she's got a little flip with the hand there. So you're getting a lot of, I think the thing is with this, this kind of trick, you're getting a lot of um, personality, aren't you? Into those little simple, those little simple things. And they, they just give you a bit of personality. Right now, hat. Let me have a look what we did here. This is a pretty cool hat, right? It's a real, we're going to do a fascinator. Look at the fascinator, isn't it lovely? Wedding. She looks very 1920s. That's what I was trying to do there. Hey, so let's do the hat. Do you want to practice the hat over here before you put it on her head? Right, so we've got, a, we've got that. We're going to go big hat. Let's say we want to go that big. Let's give yourself a bit of movement. Can you see this all right? I know I'm doing it quite lightly because it's easier to rub out if it's light. So now what we've got here is one of those big... So can you go backwards? What you like at going backwards? See if we get a piece of copy paper. This is all for scrap anyway. Let me just take a piece of copy paper and see if it, see if it works easier backwards. Right, you ready? We're going to get all of these done. Don't you worry. So you could... If that's going to be the hat like that, right? So let's just make it a bit heavier so you can see it. That's the hat, and then it comes up like this, doesn't it? So can you go backwards? Can you do that? Or the other trick is to do it upside down. So if you're better at going upside down, then there's, there's your hat like that. See? And you can always fill it in with another like that. Okay? Put another. Who's to say? Nobody's counting how many times you've gone round. So there's your hat like that. She looks... That's more like her, like her. There you go. See, I'm better doing it that way around. But there's your hat. And then you can make it floppy like that if you want. See this one? So it's like that. Like that, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Like that. Like that. Right, okay. Let's do it, girls and boys. I don't imagine Ken's doing this in a lay-by. E. <laughs> People are going to start wondering about you, Ken Kilminster. <laughs> He's sitting in a lay-by with very bad internet, doodling women. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, hat. So we'll start at the top. I'm going to go like that, and I'm just going to be free with it. Not too high, not too big. And we're off. Lightly does it. One, two, three, four five and then down we go like that that's a big hat that's a big hat she's going to irritate people on the underground with that hat <laughs> right okay i'm happy with the shape though very happy it's definitely a catwalk hat though it's not one you would wear in public is it friends hey so off we go again see and then once you've done it once it doesn't matter if they overlap look so fun to do don't know where that one came from Right, nice hat, love it. Okay, so there's the first girl we like, hey? And then you see what you can do is if you want to, you can pop the, the shape in afterwards. See, so she's coming out like that. You see what I mean? And that way, even if it, it's, it doesn't, it's not supposed to be, Exactly. You're not going around the outside of your calligraphy. You're going where her shape is. Yeah. Isn't that fun to do? See, so she's got her hand on her on her derriere. She's been very nonchalant. I like it. And if you don't like the hat, if you think that's really antisocial, if that's not an Ascot hat, I don't know what is. Have you ever been to Ascot? I've never been to Ascot. Is it worth going? Tell me. I always thought I always thought it was a bit pretentious, but I know I've got girlfriends that go every year religiously, but I've never gone. What does one think? Does one think one should go to the to the races? Should one attend Ascot? Hey, I'm not a hat person. Now, Grace, my daughter, lovely Grace in New York, do you know she could be a hat model? It does not matter 
what hat that girl puts on, she looks amazing. You know, I put a hat on, it doesn't look good. It looks, I don't know what it is about me, but hats do not suit me. I look absurd. Uh, but she's a real hat girl. Right, so here we go. That's that one. Now, should we try, should we try the poncho? Let's try the poncho one, this one. Okay, good. Let's turn it over. Let's try the poncho one. I'll tell you what we'll do with this one, just because I reckon this will be easier. If we go, if we do the poncho, just do the shape really lightly, like a triangle, right? And then come in here and then bring the dress out like that. Like that. Do you see what I've done? I'm doing it a bit faded because I can't rub it out afterwards unless I, I ink. So we're going to start here. We're going to go like that. And then we get to the poncho bit and then we come in and then we go back out again. And then we just have a lovely swirly dress like that. Okay. But if I give you, if you give yourself a triangle, you might have a bit more luck with the cape with that, that lovely 19, what was that? 1950s, do you think? That sort of style? It was, wasn't it? Very Catherine Hepburn, isn't it? Mm. Right, here we go. Okay, not copying, because it never works very well. Get a little neck going. Right, little neck, and then we'll start. Right, out we go. We're going to come round. So this is the cape, and then we come back in again. So now we're coming out for the dress. Loop, de loop, loop, de loop, and sorted. There you go. Getting a little bit excited here, aren't I? <laughs> so we'll get rid of that. This is me, Elizabethan Flourish. Let's bring that back in a bit and loop that round because you're never going to. How are you going to make that work? So we'll bring that round. So we'll just tighten that up a little bit. It's only because I'm excited because I want to show you. Right, so now let's have a look. There's her neck. Okay. Here are her hands. There's one arm. There's another one. Let's just put little sticks in so you can see what I'm talking about like that. Now, here's her neck, right, right through here. So if you think there's her, so her leg, I'm going to give you a bit of a catwalk. So there's the one at the back and here's the one at the front. See, so you've got that one and then that one at the back there. So she's got her She's got this. Her waist is quite big on her, isn't it? That's all right. So, like, my waist is quite big on me. But there you go. So that's a way to go. And you could always, if you want... So her waist is big at the moment because of this. However, watch if I take my... So now I'm going to put in the, the actual cape and then I'm going to come... But look, see, I can bring the waist in. I can bring the waist right in there. Look, suddenly, there you go. She lost four inches. Cool, if it was only that easy. <laughs> See? So this is just the flourish. Okay? Nice hat and head coming up. So we've got a neck. Got a hat. Which way do you want to make it look? She's going to go like so. There's her head. Nice. Now, she put. I put a little, like a, top on there and I found this look I'll give you a tip take the top off her head like that as if you soft head like soft bald egg like that turn it round okay and then make another little triangle because this is what we're working on it's not a mandarin hat but little triangle and we'll start at the bottom right like this and then we'll come up to the top all right so we'll start here going to go like that up we go and then that should be quite nice we'll turn it round and there she is so some of these things are easier to work from the bottom i i just think do we like this are we enjoying this hey i'd be the one at ascot shouting move your blooming ass <laughs> your blooming that you mean <laughs> Right, there you go. <laughs> so we've got, what we've got now? We've got lovely demure. This is definitely F fashion, isn't it? Right? When I was a girl, I used to doodle this stuff. 
all the time. I wanted to be a fashion designer. You know that. I've told you this before. I'm a closet fashion designer, you see. And I used to spend all my money, honestly, I used to spend all my money um, in Chatham. I used to work at Tesco's on the till. Or, and, then I, and then I went up British home stores and worked at British home stores. And because um, they paid better and the hours were better. And um, every penny I made, there used to be up the road in Chatham, there used to be a department store called Bates. And on the second floor, there, on the first floor, there was, a, there was a fabric department, you know, like John Lewis has. There was a fabric department and they'd have all the patterns and you'd be able to sit. And it was like being in a library. A lot of you will remember this. And you used to sit and you used to get the butterick patterns, like the great big laminated patterns. You would, and then there'd be filing cabinets. And so you could look at all the butterick. Do you remember? And simplicity and vogue. And this was exactly the kind of sketchy drawings, wasn't it, on the patterns. And I was in love. Every penny, every penny I made as a, as a Saturday girl, mind you, it wasn't just a Saturday. I used to go down the hill from Fort Pitt where I, where I went to school and I'd go down into Chatham and I worked on a Thursday evening after school, on a Friday evening after school and then on a Saturday as well. And every penny used to get blown at Bates on bolts, like fabric of beautiful Trevira. I, Trevira was the thing at the time. The lovely prints, there were some really beautiful, like Mary Quant stuff, you know, beautiful fabrics. And I really liked the Trevira. And I used to make some fabulous stuff, actually, really nice. But then my dad said, and he wasn't wrong, but he, well, he said it and it was what it was. He said, um, you'll never make a living with art. And in those days, in the 70s, you know, it was more of a challenge, that's for certain. He said, you're going to university because you can, you've got the capability, and you're going to do something academic. And he said, and then whether you use that academic degree or not is entirely up to you, but nobody will ever be able to take it away from you. That's what he said. And so I packed all my buttery patterns in a big box and I did languages and linguistics instead. There you go. Now you know the rest of the story. However, Dad, you were wrong. You can make a living with art, you know. But Dad, you were right. I've got an academic degree and nobody can take it away from me. So, you know. And, and, I, and I made a career out of that academic degree in another life. And that probably, that life set me in good stead for, for running a business, an art business. Because I'm telling you now, friends, it's not easy. It's not easy. And I'm very, very, very grateful, actually, that I was a businesswoman before I became an artist or a crafter. I think the other way around is more of a challenge. I think, you know, there are so many talented, so many talented artists out there, far more talented than me, far more talented than me. But they don't have a business brain and they don't know how to market themselves. Do you understand? And that's, and that's a travesty. But then again, it is what it is, you know. Anyway, back to the doodling. Okay, so we've done the girl with a lovely cape. I quite like this one. See that one? She's got more of a curve. This one, she's got more of an A skirt. Yeah, interesting. This one, she's certainly got more of a triangular and her hat's a bit different. But how nice. How nice. This one comes this way. This one goes that way. Yeah, she's got smaller feet. Give her a bit more, she'd fall over. I mean, how's she going to carry that lot on those little sticks? <laughs> but it's fashion. It's fashion. Has anybody ever been to Fashion Week? I've never been up there either. No. In fact, one of the girls at school who was in a couple of years above me, she became a really, really famous fashion designer. But it was not for me. Right, so we've done her and we've done her. How about we do the, um, do you know what? What's the name of this, that dance? 
Ah, uh, come on, you know this one. Hang on, let me put where you go. Do, 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 do. What was that? The Roaring Twenties, you know, and they had the feather fascinator, and then they did the thing with the knees. Do you know the one I mean? What's it called? Anyway, that was that. <laughs> <laughs> that's me exercise for the day <laughs> um you know that's this girl so have a look at her now and you'll get charleston thank you the charleston well done well done girls i couldn't remember the name of it the charleston i i really enjoyed the charleston when i was a kid you know get the right music going brilliant right here we go so we're going to go for the charleston girl now and um, I'm splitting these up. Are you enjoying this or am, am I on my own here? <laughs> here we go. 120 people. Absolutely wonderful. Right, here we go. There you go. Charleston. So now we'll have a look at her. So let's see what she does. So she's quite flat chested, right? Just goes straight down. Don't she's got little cap sleeves? straight down and then when we get to just below the waist really then we're going to go out a bit aren't we we could put a few tassels on there if you felt like it but let's just stick to the plan right see if we can get this right so really we're going to come down straight right like that charleston-esque there you go and then we're going out right let's see i'm not going to give myself a, gu a guide i'm and also what I want to do on this one, rather than cleavage, actually, we've, we've been quite modest on all of these. Look, we haven't come in on the cleavage here, have we? We could do. You know that, don't you? You know you could come straight in on the cleavage too. That's easy. Just come down on the first one. Do that one in a minute. Let's do the Charleston. So we're going to go up like that, right? So we're kind of coming up, right? Now we'll keep going straight, okay? It's quite a long body, this. Okay, and then when we get to there, I think we've, we've just about, let's have a think for a minute, stops, pauses. Then we're going to come out now, right, because this is the skirt, isn't it? But the skirt's not that flamboyant. It is, it's, it is and it isn't, isn't it? Quite oh, I love Charleston. How long are these dresses? That's about right, isn't it? So the Charleston, see, she's like there. She's come down to the waist and then there, like that. I reckon this has worked. What's going to make this work is the cap sleeves and the arms. So here now, I'm going to put a little cap sleeve on there and then we start changing. See, that makes it look different. Cap sleeve, then we're going to get the arms in. So she's going to, going to come in like that because she's going for her knees, isn't she? See, so we go like that, cap sleeve like that. There, are. she's going to bend down and go for the knees in a minute. Right, hands, arms, neck. Here we go. So hat. Now, fascinator. Let's go for the fascinator. Is she going to look good? Of course, she's got long arms. <laughs> do Charleston girls wear long? Yeah, they do. I reckon we're going to put the old sexy gloves on again up the arm. Cool. Don't you find when you look around now, I find I look at what, what we wear and I think, cool. We really, not all of us, but women you know, in a, in a bid for comfort, which is understandable, you know. Right now, hat. We're going to go with a kind of a box hat with a thingy off it, yeah? I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go from the bottom up, right, like this. So let me just get my bearings right down, like that, like that, like that. And then I think I'm going to go like that. Hey, went the wrong way. Should have gone that way. But it's good enough. It's a fascinator. Yeah, that's it. I think her face is a bit big. Yeah, she looks good. Right. There you go. Fascinator. They wear those hat. They wear f hair like that, don't they? F yeah. There you go. We're on. And feet. So now she, she has that funny. Here we go. One like that. She definitely crosses her legs like that. Do, 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 doesn't she? There's that foot. She wear, they wear flat shoes as well, don't they, usually? There we are. She's great. So she comes down like that and then out like that. Down like that and then out like that. And there's, the, there's that shape. That. 
Yeah, nice, eh? She's a little bit different to her. She's very, very Charleston-esque. This one's got a bit more of a flair. She's going for it. But there you go, two different butterick patterns, eh? I could have got a job. I reckon I could have got a job. And the college next door to our school, they, it was a fashion design centre. They've closed it now, travesty. But at the time, it was a really, you know, in the 70s when they built it, it was a very ugly building, but real state-of-the-art, like a big concrete jungle. Um, but my needlework teacher, she had high hopes for me. She did. She took all my stuff over there, got me an interview. Never mind. Right, so we've done, we've done her, we've done her, we've done her. Right, we've done those three. Should we have a go at the couple, the, 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 these two? Right, let's have a go. So now I'm going to show you how to do the legs. Let's do the legs on this one. Right, these are quite cool, actually. So what we're going to do, though, let's do the boy first, right? Let's do the boy first. So let me show you how to do the boy. We're going to make like a triangle this time draw it beforehand honestly it works best draw it like that and then do the decide how long your legs are going to be i i think paul's asking how many sewing machines i've got well actually i've only got three <laughs> i've got trois. one's in america i've got a really good faff in the states which I've left over there in New Mexico. It's very nice. And then I've got two here. But I haven't got time. I haven't got time, Paul. No, not at the moment. Right, so now let's have a look. What we'll do is we're going to do the body like this. And we'll just go like that, like that. Just go for it, right? And then when we get to the bottom of the... That will do. That's that sorted, right? And then we're going to put the legs in. Now, the legs... They're actually like a figure eight. Let me show you on here. You're going to start up here. You go like that. This is knee. See, the join is the knee. Back. Keep them narrow. Otherwise, they're going to be... And then come down and do a squiggle for the foot. Watch. So we'll do this one first. Knee's about there. So I'm going to come out like that. Down I go. Like that. Then I'm coming back round again and doing a little squiggle for his foot. There you go. One leg. So based on that leg and where I've put that, I'm going to put the next one in. See, I can put it that way. I can change the direction. Look, I'll show you. See this one? I put the leg down and brought it that way. See? So let's have a look. Let it, just let it happen. Stick up there because they are, they do join at the top. <laughs> well, we hope they do. All right? So we put that up there and you know, get down to about there. Right, don't think about it too much. Just off you go. There's his foot. There you go. How easy was that? There's his foot. There's that. There's his neck. There's his head. Okay. Then we've got his cap. So his cap, he's got a, he's got a baseball cap on. Right. So we're going to put a peak on like that. And then up it goes. That'll do. There's his cap sorted. So you go like that for the cap. And then you just, it's like, on top of one another so they're not really so there's this cap like that but watch at this point hang on now i've got to get my eye in so you go like that there and then you're actually coming on top now that's rubbish <laughs> hang on how did i do it i go like that and then like that now i must be doing it the other way around now that's it. It's the other way around. It's in reverse. So you're going to go like that. No, it's the other way around, Barbara. Like that. Look. So you're doing like, um, oh, that was the other thing I used to get into trouble for all the time at school, right? You know, like the Elizabethans, they put these, they used to put these ridiculous neck things on, didn't they? Think of Elizabeth I. That's the opposite way around. Let me show you what I mean. You know exactly what I mean. So let me take, for example, if that's her, that was her head there, let's say, right? Then what she would have around her neck, it would be like this, wouldn't it? You see? So you're going, you're going like that. 
And then what you can do, see, you can make. So it's the opposite because you're making. Look, I'd go slowly. But it's that Elizabethan thing, isn't it? You, what you're doing is that, but tight, right? So it's the opposite of that. So his hat, which just looks ridiculous right now, but it's really cool, actually. There's his little ear. Then we've got his hands. We'll leave his hands. We'll get her in first. Okay, so boy next. You know, boy, girl. So we just get her neck. Decide how long her dress is going to be. We're trying to sort some legs out, so don't make it too short. Make it a mini dress. Right, that's her dress. And we're going to just give yourself a little triangle because they're a couple, so they kind of dress a little bit alike. Do you, <laughs> do you sometimes see couples and they're wearing, like, buy one, get one free? You know, that bog off thing. And you see them, they're both wearing the same sweatshirt or the same. And that is so funny. Dave and I, I said, should we get should we get a pair? And I won't, I can't even repeat what he says back to me. <laughs> but I think, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> right, dresses. And we're going, we're going for the Elizabethan on this bit. And then we'll do the ruffle. Let's call it a ruffle. Yeah. Is it a ruffle or a rough? Ruffle? Ruffle. Ruffs, you tell me. Right, here we go. Concentrate, Gray, and off we go. So we're doing the F for flourish. Oh, there's quite a lot of it, isn't there? Right, but we don't want it to stick out there. We're going straight back in again. It's tight. It's a nice, tight little dress, right? So that's her dress. That'll do. And then... We're going to do her feet and her legs. So we're going to make them stand in the same, you know, about here. Put her down a bit further. Right, legs. So we've got one leg. Let's put one leg in and then we'll sort the other leg out. Right, knees. Boom, boom. Back down we go again. Foot. Okay, a bit dodgy, but we'll give it a go. Right, she's got trousers on. Now, next one. This one, we're going to make it. Should we make her a bit knock kneed? I wonder if I can. See what happens if we do this. Oh, <laughs> there you go. She's going all coy. There you, there you are. She's gone all coy. Oh, bless. There you go. There's her little feet. Oh, head. We've got to do right. Coy. So we'll make her head go. Oh, look, she's all shy looking away. And then we'll put a hat on her. Now, this is where we have to go to the, we're going to do the the rough. Have we decided what it's called yet? Rough, huh? Okay. Rough. Like that. Just think of the neck thing around Elizabeth's neck, right? The rough. Okay. It's been decided it's called a rough. Sounds good. So we're going to do the rough on the top of the head like that and then bring it round. Right, start up here. Don't want to make it too big. There you go. Rough coming round and then stop there. Oh, that's quite a nice one. Or we could make it a little bit bigger so she's a little bit more feminine. There you go. There's her face. There's his face. A bit more jewellery. Isn't that nice? I reckon I'm wasted. <laughs> And then, oh, hang on, we haven't got any arms yet. Wasted. Right. Right, so we'll put her little arms down here because she's really bashful. And then him, he's get, he's getting, look, he's getting a bit brave. He wants to reach out and give her a little, give him a little shuffle like that. Oh, look, he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> give him five minutes. Right, there you go. Bit of ground. So we've got, we've got a couple, they're beautiful. We've got a girl, real sexy. We've got another girl, where's the, we've got the Charleston, love that. So there you go, we've had some real, real fun there. I hope you enjoyed that. Now let me see, there's a couple of things I want to tell you about this week. And then on Thursday we'll get together. And it will be, let me see, F. Do you want to finish these off? Should we put these? i tell you what we'll do. Rather than gallop on to G for gallop, let's do 
F again on Thursday evening at seven o'clock. But let's take this art and let's make some really nice little notelets, shall we? Add a little bit of colour, add a little stick. Let's make cards out of these. I think these would be so lovely to do. Okay, so you can practice and then we'll get that done. Right, that's what we're doing on Thursday at seven o'clock. In the meantime, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, you've got Groovy Tuesday with Paul. So that'll be fun. He's, he's carrying on where he left off. So that'll be good. Um, then we've got the Pergamano party on the Pergamano website. All right. So that's going on. In the meantime, on TV as well, on Thursday, the Pergamano show. Now, Jane, lovely Jane Telford, she's, she's going to carry on in May because, of course, her Colin, good news, he's back on track, he's at home. But Jane's going to ease her way back onto TV in May. So on Thursday, Paul's going to be heading up the Pergamano show. And in keeping with our Pergamano party, we're going to have a bit of a bonanza on telly. And he's going to be on at 8 o'clock in the morning at 12 o'clock lunchtime and at four o'clock. So it's a real Pergamano celebration there. And then on Sunday, I know he can't get enough of it. He's going to go up again to TV land and you are going to enjoy some felt by clarity. I'll give you a, a little heads up of what we're talking about. So we've got this beautiful felt in the business, haven't we now? We've, we've expanded our range. We know that it works exceptionally well on, um, on our dies. It's already got adhesive on the back. So I think you're going to really enjoy having another look because the felt on telly has only had one outing. And so we're going to take another look at it. And um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite, ask Paul to put it through its paces with some of our fantastic aperture dies, for example. Right, so so that's going to be on on Sunday, and the time on Sunday is at three o'clock in the afternoon and at seven o'clock in the evening. I think you'll really enjoy seeing what Paul shows you there. And then, other than that, the only thing I want to show you is again, and I know I keep repeating myself, but I really I I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon now preparing the feast for our craft along, which is on the following Friday. You need to give us enough time to get these stamps to you. The stamps and the masks, we need to, we've got them all made. We need to get them to you so that you then can craft along. I'm gonna spend the rest of today preparing that feast. And, uh, and then I'll get the ingredients out so you'll find them on my blog on the website, on Clarity website, and then and then we'll have a really lovely evening together on the Friday, um, making some, some really nice art together, okay? Clean and tidy, arty grungy, maybe a surprise here and there, but um, yeah, we'll get that started. So so do, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, and put these uh, in your basket on the Clarity website, okay? So other than that, I don't think I've forgotten anything. Let me just check. I'll put that there while I'm just checking my notes. I love this. This is the, um, this was one of the club dies, wasn't it? Uh, the dandelion, I think this one was. I really like it. So let me see. I don't think I've forgotten anything. No, and if I have, too late now. Thank you for your company. I've really enjoyed this morning. I hope you enjoyed our little calligraphy people and we'll crack on and turn them into really nice art on Thursday together. See you on Thursday. Have a great week. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Thanks, Paul. <laughs>